Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. I got a really interesting question from one of my email subscribers that I want to talk to you about today. So this is from Andrew Horning, and he asked me, I've been seeing this design more often recently with wood slats behind the mixing position and with, I'm presuming, absorption behind the wood. What are your thoughts on a design like this? What are the pros and cons? It obviously looks great, but I'd be interested to learn more about the functionality of it. So that's what I want to get into with you today so you understand what this slat treatment is all about, how it works, so you understand how to use it in your room, the pros and cons, obviously. But just quickly, before I get into it, if you are looking at treatment, at base trapping for your studio and you're kind of looking at different products out there, you're thinking about whether to buy ready-made, whether to build yourself, Maybe you're a bit confused about what you're seeing. Maybe you're, you don't quite understand what you really need for your studio. I've prepared a complete guide to bass traps and bass trapping that you can download for free at the link in the description. It's kind of like an encyclopedia of all the bass trap designs out there, both DIY and off the shelf designs. So obviously any type of porous absorption base traps, all types of resonance absorption base traps. So Helmholtz resonators, membrane traps, but also compound baffle absorbers. But more importantly, I've listed how they're designed, how you can recognize what it is you're actually looking at, which type of base trap you're actually looking at, how they work, how they're intended to work in your room, how you, you're intended to place them, how you're intended to use them, how many you actually need in order to get results from these types, different types of base traps. So again, if you're looking at different types of base traps out there, if you're, you're trying to understand what is right for your room, for your home studio, make sure you download my complete guide to base traps and base trapping for free at the link in the description. But so let's jump right in and talk about these wood slats and what they're all about. So the first thing and the main thing to really understand here is that adding any type of reflective surface on top of your absorption is a great way to reduce the kind of dreaded dead room sound that you often encounter in small home studios. Because a dead room sound is mainly a result of an unbalanced reverb time and a lack of diffuse reflections in the room. If you want to learn more about that, check the video that I've linked in the card right now. So adding back reflective surfaces is particularly in, uh, useful in a home studio where space is so limited and it's so easy to end up with that kind of dead room sound. And that's the main reason why you see these wood slats on top of my absorbers in my room as well. Adding wood slats on top of absorption is just the simplest way to kind of get back some of that reflected energy in a room. But so how does this work? Well, in, in general, it follows the same principle that I've talked about before. And again, there's another video here that you can watch. But basically, it's, the, it's about the fact that sound waves see objects that are roughly the size of their wavelength, right? So when we're talking about these slats, any type of wavelengths that are shorter than the width of these slats see these slats and actually reflect off of them. And any sound waves with wavelengths longer than the width of these slats will just bend around the slats as the sound is hitting the panel and then get absorbed by the absorption behind the slats. So choosing the right slat width gives you some control over the frequency range that gets absorbed versus the frequency range that gets reflected. Now, the second part to understanding how adding these slats work is about the actual pattern of the slats, right? So as you see, it follows a particular kind of order and also the slat to gap ratio, right? So how much surface area is absorptive and how much surface area is reflective. And getting this right actually creates a very simple type of diffuser called a binary amplitude diffuser. Because if you just place kind of a, a regular pattern of slats on top of your absorption, 
it might actually cause specular reflections again, which isn't really what you want when things are so kind of tight and, and kind of in close proximity as they typically are in your home studio. So the pattern that you see on my panels and the actual gap to slat ratio follows a pseudo random number sequence in order to maximize the diffusion or rather the scattering of the reflected energy. And by the way, if you want to learn the exact steps on how to design your own diffuser front, including obviously picking the right slat width and the right pattern and how to use it in your room, depending on its layout and kind of shape and size, make sure you're signed up to my email list and keep an eye out for my Build a Better Bass Trap online course, which I'll open up again very soon. But getting back to the original question of whether to put these slats on uh, behind the mix position or rather on the front wall. So in my personal opinion, I wouldn't do this no matter whether the pattern is optimized for scattering or not. Because what I saw in my kind of early experiments with this design is that even ha having any type of kind of reflective surface in close proximity to your speakers can still cause kind of unwanted reflections that just that you don't want to have. So it's it's just something that I I I wouldn't I wouldn't tempt <laughs> I wouldn't tempt fate if you will by having any type of reflective surface in close proximity to your, to your speakers. Yeah, this is one of the reasons I, for example, I don't like your typical producer desk style studio desks with those speaker benches that you put your speakers on. Yeah, The only exception to this is the actual front wall. So in a kind of in a scenario where your room is so small that you have to set up so close to the wall that your speakers are right up against it. So in terms of kind of front wall treatment, I would always say either have no treatment at all with the speakers right up against the wall or just use pure absorption. So in summary, I think using wood slats is a great way to reduce any potential dead room sound. But in your typical kind of small home studio, I would always try and maximize the scattering effect of any slats that you add to the absorption in order to not create any potential unwanted specular reflections. And in either case, I think don't think it's a good idea to do this on the front wall behind your speakers. In my experience, it's always better to just keep things safe around your speakers and not have any reflective surface there that doesn't absolutely need to be there. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope that cleared up your question about using wood slats in your studio. And with that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.